Hello and welcome to another SY Diagnostics video and in today's video we've got a 2014 Ford Transit Courier where the air conditioning is blowing warm air. Okay guys, so as always I like to prove the fault. I've currently got the engine running, aircon is not switched on and we've got a vent temperature of around about 20 degrees. Now this vehicle, what it was doing, um, the vehicle is close to my heart because it's actually my own vehicle so I can explain the fault quite good and quite easily. Basically today I believe is the 30th of July uh, 2022 and We've got an outside temperature in the mid-teens, I think it is currently. Um, and probably a week, ten days ago, we had the hottest day on record where the temperatures reached about 40 degrees. So I was coming home from work and I thought, it's a bit warm in here, I'll put the aircon on. And I noticed it wasn't blowing very warm at all, so very cold at all. And it kept bringing the temperature down a little bit then switching off and then bringing it down and switching off and it was cycling quite quickly but what I did notice as well that whilst I was driving uh, the aircon worked absolutely fine um, so the fault really isn't very apparent now that the temperature has dropped um, and I've not used the aircon since because I've I've actually diagnosed the fault anyway but what I'm going to do I'm just going to recreate it because I think it's quite an interesting fault uh, for those guys that don't know a great deal about air conditioning, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I've got a basic understanding and know what needs to work in order for the AC to work. So without further ado, um, let's do some testing, let's find the fault, let's prove the fault and let's fix the fault. We'd also know that the aircon is blowing warm, it's blowing cold, especially um, idling, it's, it's warm and whilst we're driving it's getting cooler. So what could be the likely culprits? Well based on what we know now, we could have a blocked condenser um, restricting the flow, could have a lack of airflow across the condenser um, with the fans not working, uh, we could also have an expansion valve that's stuck. The compressor is cycling, which I'll show you in a second, so I don't think the expansion valve is likely. Um, the expansion valve could also be um, iced up, the evaporator could be iced up. What I haven't actually told you as well is that um, prior to looking at this, I did cheekily uh, vac sorry, evacuate the system and I pulled out 480 grams of gas. I vacuumed it down for an hour, which would boil off any moisture that's in the system. So I don't think we're looking at an expansion valve uh, icing up or an, expan uh, an evaporator uh, icing up. But uh, a bit later on we can also look at evaporator temperatures as well. So what we'll do next, we'll run the system. As you can see there I've got three items there. Let me just zoom in. And we've got the multimeter on the right, the yellow item. That is connected to the air conditioning pressure sensor because unfortunately looking on Forescan and on IDS there isn't a credible data value for the air con uh, pressure voltage or the pressure itself it just gives you 0 0.00 volts and 0 0.00 kPa the middle gauge is a thermocouple thermometer and what I've done I've put this across the condenser so I've got um, coupling one pre-condenser and coupling to post-condenser so we'll see if there's any temperature changes and finally we've got the pressure gauges hooked up and they should be equal now Let's zoom in and they're roughly sitting around about five bar um, as I said I'm working backwards on this video I have actually I've already diagnosed it but I'm just going to go and show you guys so at rest both the gauges should read five bar uh, based on the current temperature being around about the mid-teens and obviously whilst it's at rest there is no high pressure side and there is no low pressure side they should both be pretty much equal which I've left it 
Well, if I was to leave it at probably another half an hour to an hour, uh, both gauges would read 5 bar. So let's start the system up, let's get it up and running, and uh, let's look at some uh, live data, some, sorry, some values on the gauges we've got set up, and let's see what we can find. So as we already know, we've got a standing pressure of around about 5 bar, give or take, and temperatures T1 is 25.1, that's the temperature probe prior or pre-condenser, um, and 24.5 is post-condenser. I've got them as close to the condenser joints as I can, and we're sat with a static pressure sensor voltage of about 1.18 around about 1.2 volts so let's start the system up and let's see what happens so hopefully you hear then that the compressor cycled and it's now working Low side pressure has dropped to just above 2 bar, high side is rising as it should. We have got temperatures there, 33 and 28, so it's not dropping the temperature much, in fact it's rising quite a lot. Pressure sensor voltage is rising and straight away I know what the issue is because um, I know through product knowledge on these particular vehicles the moment the aircon switches on the fans cut in and I can tell now that the fans aren't working hence that's why we're getting incredibly high pressures of over 20 bar there so I'm just going to quickly turn it off that was getting dangerously high pressure there and the temperatures, obviously 39 and 36, we've got a three degree difference, clearly not um, being cooled down. So pretty much we've got an airflow problem across the condenser. So what I'm going to do now, I'll just prove that by taking it out on a road test. Once we took it out on a road test, what we'll do we'll look into why the fan isn't working, whether it's the fan itself or whether there's any control issues with the fan. The fan system on this one is a twin speed single fan. Let me just zoom out. And the relays for the fan are in that fuse box just to the right of the battery. So that's where we're going to be heading next after I've done the road test to prove to you that um, airflow makes a huge difference to the pressure. I won't be able to show you the temperatures because unfortunately the thermocouple um, leads aren't long enough for the road test, but the, te the multimeter will be. So let's get that proved and next stage we'll go and check into the fan as to why it's not working. So just to prove that um, airflow makes a difference to the pressures and the temperatures at the condenser, I'm just going to do a little experiment. So we know at static we have about roughly about 1.3 volts, I think it is, at the uh, aircon pressure sensor, because unfortunately there is no data PID that's credible to give me a pressure or a voltage. So we've got a vent temperature currently of around about 18 degrees the aircon is switched off and just because I've had it just well I've just had it running uh, we've got a voltage at the sensor of 1.9 volts so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the AC on I'm trying to press the button whilst looking through the phone so I've just pressed the wrong button so the AC is now switched on we've got it set to as cold as it will go and the temperature at the vent is coming down and the pressure is rising. I'm only going to let it get to about 3 volts and then what I'll do, I'll go for a road test and uh, hopefully prove that the voltage will come down as the pressure and the temperature drops with the airflow. So we've just got some, 
about three volts now let's get to 3.1 and I shall just turn the camera off we'll go for a drive and I'll film it whilst I'm driving okay so I've gone out on road test I found a straight road that's residential I'm um, not on the main road I'm still going to be doing my Judas Priest impression and I'm going to be breaking the law if anybody gets that fair play aircon switched on we've got a vent temperature of just under seven degrees that's proving the aircon switched on and we've got a voltage currently of about 1.92 volts um, just let it rise up and we'll get it up to about three volts again and see what happens okay so we're at 3.2 volts I'll just get off now and hopefully we'll see the voltage drop remarkably I'm holding this one-handed so there's no way I can steer one-handed and turn the aircon off at the same time so that's just proving there that airflow makes a difference to the voltage to the pressures and that we do definitely need a fan on this vehicle so we've got a vent temp there of 4.5 degrees been driving a while now it does rise up to about eight degrees as the aircon cycles and the voltage is a nice steady around about 1.6 to 2 volts as it's cycling in and out and the airflow is obviously cooling the condenser down as it should so now I've pulled back up and I'm in my driveway back where we started Right, so what I'm going to do now, um, probably in the real world, I'd have just gone straight to the fan itself, probably just hooked a H7 bulb across it, switched the aircon on and made sure the bulb lit up. But for the purposes of the video, that would make quite a, a poor video. So I want to make sure that um, straight away that the fan is getting its signal and that the relay is working and then we can go and check directly at the fan itself so what I'm using there is just a, a relay test kit just some um, wires that plug into the relay incidentally this is relay one in the fuse box it's the left front grey relay and the test kit is made by laser I'm not affiliated with them in any way so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make sure now the ignition is on um, and I'm gonna make sure that I've got a 12 volt feed at pin 1 of the relay for the primary side and pin 3 for the secondary side then what we'll do we'll start the engine up switch the aircon on make sure I've got control from the PCM um, and also an output on the relay on pin 5 so let me just go now and check the voltages on pins uh, what was it 1 and 3 I'm hoping you can see that that is pin one lit up that is the primary side coil and pin three is the 12 volt feed for the secondary side of the coil so what I'll do now I'll just start the engine up I'm going to swap the probe to the battery positive because we're now checking for a ground so if I put that to a good ground hopefully you will see it it will light up hopefully you can see that so that's now testing the ground so I'll start the engine up get the aircon working and we're going to test pin 2 of the relay Hopefully you can see that lit up. I'll not be able to see that until I review the footage. And what I'll do now, I've just changed the test lead, the test light to a negative, and I'm now going to test the output on pin five. And that is pin 5, so that would indicate now that we have got power going 
from the relay to the fan. So the next place we go to now is the fan and make sure we've got feed there. Right, so I've got the vehicle up in the air now. I'm on axle stands. I'm working at home, remember? And I don't like working on axle stands. But at the end of my finger there is the multi-plug for the cooling fan. And this is actually a twin speed fan. And looking at the fuse box, it does have a low speed and a high speed relay. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a H7 bulb across both of those pins there. The pins do look okay, no corrosion, no melting on there. And uh, what I'll do, I'll power the relay up for the fan and see if I can get the bulb to light. If it lights up, then we know that the ground and the wire up to this plug is okay. And the wire from the relay to the motor here is okay. So let me get that rigged up and uh, demonstrate it for you. So the joys of working on your back, I've got loads of grit in my eye now. So I've got the black uh, negative side of the bulb connected to the negative side of the fan motor, which is a black and green, and the red of the bulb connected to the positive side of the motor, which is the brown wire. So I'll go back up top now and power the relay up. Right, so as you can hear, I've got the engine running and the high speed fan. So as soon as I put that in, the light lights up, indicating we've got power and control down to the fan itself. And as you can see, the high pressure is rising and the low pressure is sat just below two bar. So the aircon is actually working now. So we've got control down to the fan. Let me just turn the engine off and turn the video off and I'll come back. So we've got the engine turned off now. I put relay back, uh, relay one back in. And as soon as I put that in, as you saw, the aircon started working, and we had power down to the um, to the to the fan motor itself. I'm connected across the fan motor, so I'm using the ground for the fan motor. So I'm confident now that uh, we've got a good power and a good ground for the fan. So what I need to do now is just pop underneath, see if I can power the fan up. If the fan won't power up, then we're looking at replacing the fan as simple as that so a few days has passed now I've waited until I got a new fan uh, arrived before I fitted it proved it's working and what I'll do now I'll show you the old fan as you can see there it's lit up so I've got a circuit through the fan itself but when I power it up nothing happens at all not even a spark nothing doesn't even trip out the power probe so we've proven that we've got feed down there and we've now proven that the fan doesn't work. So let's fit the new fan and prove that it works. Okay, so we've got the fan in and the fan is now working. I've got the engine running with the aircon switched on difficult to see I'll just do something stupid now there we go you could hear that I'd rather do that than put my finger in there so what we'll do now we'll get the gauges hooked up the temperature gauges hooked up and we'll do an efficiency test on the aircon So we've got the gauges back on again, the new fan is running um, and we've got um, ambient outside temperature on T3 there, it's showing around about 30 degrees, it's about 31 degrees, that's ambient temperature. Got the gauges connected up as I've just said, the engine is running and as you can see there the high pressure goes to approximately 13 and 3 quarter bar around about 200 PSI and the low pressure down to a cycle around about 25 PSI and about 1.6 uh, bar incidentally if I was to try and measure the um, 
sub cooling so on the high pressure there we've got a temperature around about 54 degrees and on T2 I've got the temperature probe connected to the condenser outlet and it's about 38 degrees 38.5 degrees so 52 degrees minus 38 is about what's that 12 14 degrees different uh, of sub cooling um, going by the figures I've got that's a little bit high and the superheating on the low side we've got a temperature of let me just let it there we go it's cycled again and we're going down to about minus two degrees the gauge has just switched itself off and round about 20 degrees but well, I think really I ought to be closer to the outlet of the evaporator uh, again the superheating is a little bit too high but I don't think these are hard and fast approximate values all I'm bothered about now is the aircon is working lovely uh, as you can see on the vent temperatures and the evaporator temperatures and it's not overheating so as far as I'm concerned now that's a job fixed